Hey guys, welcome to the video. I've got a refrigerator that's been peaking temperatures slightly above where it should be and also making an extremely loud and annoying humming noise. I've located the sound coming from the top of the freezer compartment, which is where the evaporator fan is located. My theory is that the evaporator fan motor has gone bad, so I bought a new one off Amazon. Let's see how hard it is to switch out. So in case you're wondering, what is an evaporator fan? Well, the evaporator fan is part of the overall refrigeration system. It pulls air through the cools of the evaporator to remove the heat from the circulating air. It's also accountable for distributing the cooled air through both the freezer and the refrigerator compartments in most cases. As you can tell, those are important functions and if your fan isn't operating correctly, it can cause your refrigerator's temperature to run high. As a disclaimer, I'll mention that I'm not an appliance repairman, just a guy on YouTube taking a refrigerator apart to see if I can fix it. If you're watching this video, maybe it'll help you avoid a costly repair or from throwing out an appliance that would work as long as you can install a $10 part. I just showed you the electrical connection in its clip because there's a few of these on here and they all seem to be a little bit different. Due to the small space allowed in these side-by-sides, you're going to have to unclamp these by fill, so it helps to see what they look like before you blindly go in and try to unplug them. Now this isn't difficult, and I'll say the only difficult part about doing this is keeping up with all the screws that you're taking out and also installing everything in the order in which you remove them. I suggest taking plenty of pictures and video of each step, that way you can refer back to them as you're putting everything back together. And trust me, if you don't do this often, you will need to do that. Now there's some pieces in this fridge, like this cover here, where the screws, uh, once you loosen them, you can pull the cover off and leave the screws in place. For those, I'd suggest leaving the screws, because the more screws you take out, the more you can lose. Today, they're going to test us. For video purposes, I was able to edit out all the cussing and the long clips of me fighting with different pieces. Just know, sometimes you have to just hang in there and keep working with it and eventually it'll come out. And, you know, it's okay to take a break too, which I did multiple times on this project. So finally, we've made our way to the evaporator fan. That's the housing on the evaporator fan there, and I'm just trying to make some room to get that out, and then we'll try to remove it. But again, there are some electrical connections here, so I, I did take some pictures of that, so I know how to hook them back up. There's so many more wires than I expected running to the evaporator fan housing. I'm trying to figure out how to navigate. Ideally, I'd like to remove this whole unit so that I could remove the old fan and install the new one on my workbench, but it looks like I'm going to have to do it where it sits, which is unfortunate because there's so little room to work on this freezer side. Oddly, the fan blade was hard to get off. I'm not sure why. If you know a trick on how to get these off, let me know. But I worked with it about two or three different times and gave it all I got, and it finally popped off. But it should be easier than that, I don't think. During that violent exchange with the fan there, I got two new screws that showed up. Mr. Ryder came from somewhere. Now this here is a good place to take pictures because I'm re removing the dust cover and the grommet that's on the other side so you want to make sure you remember how they're oriented, otherwise you could put them on backwards. Now I didn't show it in the video, but before cutting these wires, make sure that your motors look the same. Uh, that would be the first indication that you may have bought the wrong motor. Now I do compare again just to make sure, and as you can tell they are the exact same size. <clears throat> now, I forgot to hit record, but I did go ahead and strip all these. 
and I reinstalled this grommet and the dust shield. Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to get this whole unit out of here and do it on my workbench was so that I could solder these wires together. But since we're working inside here and there's not a lot of room, I wasn't able to get my solder gun and everything kind of set up to make that happen. So we're going to use these electrical connectors here. I don't like them. I never feel like I get a, a get a secure clamp on them. Like I can always kind of move it a little bit if I wanted it with enough force, I could slide it right off. Uh, so I do add some electrical tape to help secure it on there. But again. Not a huge fan of these type of connectors. Still slather around. And my apologies for some of these camera angles being off. I did have a new GoPro light that I was trying out. Basically, you mount that to your head mount, and then you mount the GoPro to it. And there's a couple pivot points. So if you're not precise on those pivot points, you're going to be a little bit off. Uh, kind of like here. Like, you get all forearm in that shot. So at this point I have all the wires connected, I've got the dust cover back on, I've got the grommet back on in the correct position, I've got the metal bracket attached, and everything should be good. I didn't notice the motor moving that much when I took the old one off, so I, I don't know if that's normal. So one of the things I'm going to do here is just clamp these wires back, because if that motor can move some, then so can the blade, so I don't want these wires getting caught up in the, uh, in the fan blade. So I'm not going to show the whole thing, but I didn't make an error here. I started installing pieces in the wrong order. This piece does not go in first. It should be the cover. But I wanted to leave this in here to show you the importance of taking pictures before you remove pieces. Thankfully, I was shooting a YouTube video, so I was able to go back and review my footage to find my error. And I did go ahead and edit out all the unneeded installing so that we uh, are now back on track in the correct order. in America, boys.
All right, so the fan is installed and we'll get everything back together. Let's get this thing plugged in and give it a week or so to make sure the evaporator fan is working correctly and that the temperatures are staying where they need to be. All right, we're gonna fast forward a bit and now it's been two weeks since we installed that motor. These are the settings I have it at. We wanna make sure that we're at the optimal temperature in both the fridge and the freezer compartments. So doing a quick Google check, we want us to be at 37 in the fridge and zero or below in the freezer. Before installing the new fan motor, it was peaking on the fridge side around 45 and on the freezer side around 35, so that's way too high. As you can tell now, on the fridge side, we're at 35 and we're not peaking but at 39. Then over on the freezer side, we're at three degrees, which is fine. Uh, we'd like to keep it at zero or below. But the defroster is on the freezer side, so when that comes on, it does warm everything up so it can melt the ice. So I suspect that's why we're a little bit high here and have high peaks. And that is the end of the video. I appreciate you stopping by. And if you watched this far, please make sure you hit that like button. Think about subscribing, and I will catch you on the next one. And the next one will probably be a video on how to cheaply clean a refrigerator, and I'll use this one as an example. As you can tell, it is in disgusting shape. It's been sitting in the basement for a while, hadn't been cleaned, but we're about to change that in the next video. I'll see you there.